Hello, I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti. Today, I'm personally speaking, I'll be joined by award-winning singer-songwriter Judy Collins. Judy's latest album is called Winter Stories. Please stay with us. Hello and welcome to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and the iconic singer-songwriter Judy Collins joins me now. Making her album debut in 1961, Judy has released over 55 albums and her voice still resonates today. Judy's rendition of Joni Mitchell's Both Sides Now has been entered into the Grammy Hall of Fame and was the lead single from her 1967 album, Wildflowers. And her version of Stephen Sondheim's Send in the Clowns won Grammy Award for Song of the Year in 1975. Her most recent album is Winter Stories, a collaboration with the Norwegian singer Jonas Field and the bluegrass band Chatham County Line. Judy has been married to her husband, Louis Nelson, for 23 years. They've been together for over 40 years, and she continues to perform over 100 shows a year. The range of material she records has included folk, show tunes, pop, rock and roll, and standards. Like other folk singers of her generation, Judy was drawn to social activism. She represents UNICEF and campaigns on behalf of the abolition of landmines. She's here with us today to talk about her life, her career, her faith, and the values that sustain her. Joining me now, I'm so pleased to welcome to Personally Speaking, the legendary singer-songwriter Judy Collins. Before we get to our interview with Judy, let's listen to something from her latest album called Winter Stories. Feel a shiver through the curtain There's silver tracery on the pane And all I think I know for certain Is somehow, some way the light will come again
We are here talking to Judy Collins, and we're going to, among other things, be playing throughout this interview a, a, cut, a cut or two from her new album, which is called Winter Stories. But, Judy, th- first of all, thanks for coming on. Let me tell you, last weekend I had the opportunity to go to Malloy College and listen to you, and I don't believe what the New York Times says. I don't think you're 80 because you're better than ever. <laughs> Thank you. It's the truth. It's the truth. And for our listeners, what I'm talking about specifically, I've always been a, a, a big supporter of Judy and her music, but uh, even old songs that she's singing now, uh, uh, something like Bridge Over Trouble Water, Send the Clowns, Both Sides Now, Amazing Grace, uh, she obviously reinterprets and reinterprets and gives new dynamics and new nuances to the songs and, and gives them a richness that makes them, if I can say this, far more meaningful for me than they were even years ago. Uh, that's obviously a conscious decision, right, Judy? Well, I'm very lucky because I have something that's innate in my own personality or talent or whatever you want to call it, and I'm attracted to songs, and the ones I sing, I hope, can become more understandable. Yes. And you and you make them that way, and and it's a beautiful thing. I was kidding before about the New York Times piece, which was a, a beautifully laudatory piece about Judy Collins. But Judy, I want to ask you uh, one of the things mentioned in there, and you've written about it beautifully in, in your books. But always people mention the way in which Clark died, your son. But I don't want to go there. I want to go someplace different. I want to I want to hear you say what was something beautiful about Clark. Oh, he was an amazing young man. He was uh, 33 when he died. But he was intelligent, he was funny, he was um, a friend, had a million friends, he was uh, just a very special guy. And, and and let me ask you this. This is kind of a spiritual question for me, but uh, a lot of the people that I have loved and lost over the years, I still talk to you. Do you still talk to Clark? Oh, yes. He's with us all the time. Oh, that's great. Yep. That is so great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, You know, we met you and I once before. Uh, you had won the Christopher Award for a film that you were behind. Uh, and I oh. I was director of the Christophers, and, and uh, you came through our awards and stuff. And I wanted to ask you, since that time when you made that great documentary, which is also nominated for an Oscar, have you have you done more in terms of a film? Do you have plans to do more in terms of film? No, no, no. I just, I don't have, uh, I can't. I mean, I want to, but I, can, I don't have the... <clears throat> I don't have the time, honestly. Well, maybe. Maybe I will now. I don't know. You know, the Christopher Award, I am the most proud of the Christopher Award as as anything I've ever done. The Christopher Award, which came to us for, I'd say, to me and my my co-director, really meant so much to us. And although the film was also nominated for an Academy Award, I still felt that the Christopher Award was the top of the <laughs> top of the mountain. Really, that's a, that's a great thing. You know, the the motto is better to light one candle than to curse the darkness, which is in so many ways yes. what you have done time and time again in so many aspects of your life. And I know the Christophers were thrilled to ha- be able to give you the award, but also your continuing relationship with them is a wonderful thing. Uh, l- let me ask you this: You know, I, I as a, a guy in ministry, I get to uh, do weddings every weekend, and I. Uh, I, I usually, to better prepare to give some kind of talk or homily at the, the weddings, I say, hey, to the couples, could you do me a favor and each of you write me an essay? Why, of all the billions of people out there, why is this the one you want to build a life with? And I, I mention that, Judy, because you have, for more than 40 years, built this wonderful life with Lewis, your husband. I'm just wondering, what, what is there about Lewis that made you say, there are a billion good men out there, but, but I want Lewis in my life? I was just lucky to meet him. (laughs) I don't know what it was. When I met him, he wasn't exactly my type. He was much more mannerly and considerate than some of the people that I was hanging out with. But he's something else. He's a he's a strong, talented, kind, and uh, amazing artist. Of course, you know he designed the Korean Memorial on the Mall in Washington D.C. But he's a genuine artist and a wonderful man and a great companion, so I'm very lucky. Well, as as no doubt he considers himself to be with you. Trudy spoke about, uh, at the concert, she talked about the impact of her dad, who many people know and some people don't know, was himself blind. What I wonder, Judy, is uh, he obviously was very formative in your life. Can you tell us something about what both mom and dad did right in raising you? Well, they were extraordinary people. Uh, the more, the farther I get from that age, 
when they were raising me and I could see what they were doing. And now that I see it so much more clearly, they both were uh, products of um, strong parenting. And in spite of my father's blindness, you know, he was lucky to get into a great school in Idaho that really dealt well with him, taught him how to do what he wanted to do, which was to get around in the world. But they'd gone through the depression. They were both, they were both good-looking, handsome, strong, uh, optimistic people who had ethics and character, which is missing in so much of our culture, as we can talk about later. Right. And they were wise, and they were prudent, and uh, and they were successful. You know, they ra- they raised five of us, and we were all doing well. My brother, <coughs> one of my youngest brothers died of cancer this about two years ago but other than that and he he too was talented successful so my parents were really the salt of the earth they were i have a a good friends lauren and chris who had recently a a down syndrome child and uh, when i get together with them they regularly tell me that it's such a gift the disability because it makes them so much more hypersensitive to the fact that we're all disabled in one way or another but i'm wondering your dad your dad's disability uh do you think it sensitized you to be more aware of, of the fact that we're all broken? I don't know. I don't know. I He certainly was an amazing person, and just being with him, <clears throat> growing up with him, was a great education yeah. because he was a strong activist in his own way. He was a great musician. Um, he had a, a great deal to offer. Judy Collins has a new album out called Winter Stories. We played a cut from that before. Um, for, for me personally, I had come to embrace her music when I was a, a kid in college and, and uh, she had a, an album called Wildflowers out there. And what I didn't realize till recently, Judy, was that uh, my favorite particular song of yours was Since You've Asked. And I didn't realize that you had not only uh, obviously sung it, but that you also wrote it. I guess what I'm wondering is when something like that, something magnificent like Since You've Asked is created, um, Where's the inspiration? I, I, you know, when I, I listen to good music, I wonder how in the world did that person receive the gift of that song? Uh, when I first met and recorded uh, um, Leonard Cohen's song, songs, I recorded, of course, um, Suzanne and, and so forth. And then, and then he asked me, this was in 1967, he asked me why I wasn't writing my own songs. So I went home and sat down at my um, at my Steinway where I'd been practicing Mozart, and I wrote since you've asked. Uh, before I did that, I went up to see a friend of mine, Bruce Langhorn, who was a guitarist that I worked a lot with in the old days. And I said, "What do you? How do you do this? What? What's the procedure? How do you write songs? <laughs> what, what? 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 What things do you do?" And he said, "Well, okay, I'm going to give you a an assignment." Go home and write five songs about a relationship, the beginning, the middle, and the end. So I went home, and I, that's the first song was uh, Since You've Asked. Wow. It's a pragmatic thing, actually. Mainly, you have to sit down and do it. Yeah, and you did, and it came across magnificent. It was uh, it was the song that uh, in my first romantic relationship with a girl named Tony. That was uh, that was our song. So many years later, you're, you're still in my soul because of that song. Um, let me ask you. You mentioned Leonard Cohen, so I want to follow up on that. When you've known creative geniuses like Leonard Cohen, and you've had a lifetime of friendship, which is beautiful, but then they they leave this earth. Um, for you, Judy Collins, is it? more about simply being grateful that I had the privilege of knowing this friend, or is the pain of missing them as acute as the gratitude? Well, that can certainly happen. It certainly is true for a number of, of losses, but they're always with us, and, I, and I'm and i Buddhist in part of my soul, I think, and I do believe that we we are meant to come and then to go, and where it is, we don't know. Right. <laughs> Well, I, I think I'm hoping it's heaven. That's that's my my best bet, and I'm hoping I'm right about that. Let me ask you too. Uh, one of my closest friends uh, for many many years was Patricia Neal, and and a favorite movie of hers was the subject was Roses, as it is of mine. How did it come to be that your songs became part of that important soundtrack? Well, I was in the middle of making uh, my album, Who Knows Where the Time Goes, and the producer of that movie called me and said, "I'm listening to." 
your song, Albatross, and I'm making a movie, I'm downstairs and my children are upstairs playing your records. And every time Albatross comes on, I want to use it in the scene that I'm doing. So I'd like to do that. Is it okay? And I said, yes. It's the scene where Patricia Neal goes out on the bus to uh, Long Island. Right. And Albatross is playing during that scene. And then he said, what else are you doing? And I said, well, I'm making an album called Who, Who Knows Who Knows Where the Time Goes. He said, I want to hear it. And that's why Who Knows Where the Time Goes is also in The Subject to Its Roses. And, and it's so integral to the whole story. And, and I know Frank Gilroy had written the thing, obviously not aware of your music, but your music is so perfectly integrated into that story. And uh, it's interesting to me, I, I, Pat Neal's face was a work of art, but uh, her face comes alive with your music as her background. And it's a, a great, great gift. Please stay with us. We'll be back with more of our interview with award-winning singer, composer, Judy Collins, in just a moment. in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. You've seen me around the neighborhood, and you've told me I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every four children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we could grow up and be whatever we want. I want to grow up and be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everyone. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide seven meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and I'm joined now by Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter Judy Collins, whose most recent album is called Winter Stories. Let's listen once again to Judy Collins. This is from her album Wildflowers, a personal favorite of mine. It was also authored by her, composed by her. It's called Since You've Asked. What I'll give you since you've asked is all my time together. Sunny days, the warm and rocky weather. Take the roads that I have walked along, looking for tomorrow's time. Peace of Spills into yours Changing with the hours Filling up the world with time Turning time to flowers I can show you all the songs That I never sang to one man before We have seen a million Stones lying by the water. You have climbed the hills with me to the mountain shelter, taken off the days one by one, setting them to breathe in the Uh, Judy Collins is our guest. Her album is called Winter Stories. Judy, um, I, I was struck by not just, again, the concert I saw you at last week, and I know you do that all the time going out to sing, but when you sing uh, in this particular instance because of the Christmas season, Christmas songs, uh, you sing them with a, a, a great power. And I just wondered, you, you, you know, you aligned yourself with a Buddhist understanding of, of, of life and the meaning of life, but uh, you also 
you back you you bat out there songs with a Christian theme with great enthusiasm with great meaning. Uh, what has the Christian message meant to you in your life? I grew up a Methodist, and I'm definitely a Christian, but I don't adhere to um, all of the uh, dogma. Right, right. But I think Christ is. Christ was the first original. Well, he wasn't the first rebel, but he was the great, a great rebel right. and a great, uh, a great uh, provocateur. You know, he. I mean, forgiveness in the in the first place. The, the idea that one has to forgive is so radical. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's such a completely. You know, when we grow up with the idea of punishing God, we don't. We don't get we don't understand that that was not the Christian message at all. <laughs> yes, quite the opposite, quite the so, opposite. I I was, I think, you know, the Christ message, and the Christ story is always, always uplifting and always life-affirming. In your own personal journey, is forgiveness a natural gift to you, or do you have to work at it? Oh, I think we all have to work at it, but that's why it's radical. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's... That's why it's hard. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> you know, I, I'm intrigued, especially among very rigid conservative Christians, that uh, one of the things I, I love about Jesus is when I say to the kids in my school, you know, what's the sin he most often condemns? And they guess any number of sins that are not the, the sin. But in the end, it comes down to hypocrisy, calling people to live a value system that you're not living yourself. And, and I find those who are most rigid so often are doing just that. Uh, what do you do in the face of hypocrisy? When you find it, how do you confront it? Uh, well, lots of ways, but I basically work on my own inner and outer mental and physical and spiritual health, and that helps. Wow, okay. And how, how is that best done, Judy? Prayer, meditation, uh, listening to great music, reading great literature. Those are some of the things that help. I'm a great fan, I'm a great fan of Thomas Merton, for instance. Okay. I don't know if you read Merton, but I do almost on a regular basis. So my readings, my um, my general idea of prayer and meditation, they all help. Thomas Merton was one of the first things we were given in seminary training, and uh, I, I hope people are still reading his works because they are timeless. They're truly evergreen in terms of having values and truths that last for all time, and uh, I'm not surprised that Judy Collins reads them. At the concert, one of the non-Christmas songs that Judy sang was a song uh, about dreamers. And Judy, can you tell us a little bit about what gave you the passion to say that uh, these dreamers in our culture who want to be a part of America uh, should be given the right to live here and to grow here? And uh, I guess the real question I'm asking is, why do you think in a nation of immigrants, we are so quick to forget that none of, <laughs> that none of us came from here, yeah. you know? Why do we, why do we forget that? There's the hypocr there's hypocrisy for you to start the day, right? <laughs> and to try to try to deal with that problem. I was watching a television show in in 2016, and a young woman came on who talked so eloquently about her mother being very worried because she, as a young woman, was a dreamer, and her mother was afraid she was going to get sent away. So the inspiration came. You can get the song. Everybody can get the song. It's on iTunes. It's on YouTube. It's a song with a video to it, and it's called Dreamers, and it is about immigration. And we are all immigrants. Right. <laughs> And, and we should know that. You would think then that since all of our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents came here for a better life that we would understand. Now, what I get back from some of my uh, more traditionalist friends would be, well, yeah, but they came here legally, but I'm not sure that's even true. And nonetheless, the point is the passion behind that coming here was, I love my kids. If you love your kids, don't you want them to have a better life, which is all that's behind all this, you know? Now, what do you say, though, Judy, when you're confronted by the people who say, but, you know, if we just open the borders, there'll be chaos, well, we're suckers for a bad cell. We've had uh, 200 and some odd years of dealing with immigration in a sane way, and we're a smart country. We've figured out how to get people to the moon. Right. You know, we've figured out a lot of things, and I think we should and can are, and are capable of figuring out how to handle immigration without looking like bar barbarians at the gate. Yeah. 
Judy Collins is our guest. As I mentioned before, she's got many obvious, wonderful CDs out there, many wonderful albums. Winter Stories is the most recent I hope you'll get and pick up by going online her song that she's written called Dreamers about the challenge of of being respectful of those who long for our country. But I want to go back to something else about Judy Collins that I just recently discovered I didn't know. Um, One of the things that uh, uh, I, I believe is that we, we learn from our disabilities in many, many ways. Uh, but one of the things that – yesterday, I'll give you an example, Judy, of what I'm talking about. Yesterday, I had a funeral for a 15-year-old boy who was killed the day after Thanksgiving. His bike was hit by a car. And, and in, in preaching at that funeral, I said, you know, it's inevitable that some people are going to be angry at God, not because God caused this, but because we've got to take our anger out on somebody. And when we get disappointed, heartbroken, when we face crisis – uh, God is love, and, and God's love can embrace us even when we're ticked off at, at, at God. I mention that because I hadn't realized, Judy, that in your life you have grappled for a while with polio, for a while with TB, for a while with eating disorders, disorders for a while with, with drinking and alcoholism. And, and all those things, being given one of those burdens would be enough. Being given all those burdens, um, have you ever been inclined to shake your fist in the Creator's face? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. How come? I, I, I don't. I just don't do that. I don't. Wow. It, it doesn't. It doesn't help. It doesn't. No. It does. It won't. It doesn't help. It's, it's only destructive. Okay, Judy. Thanks for your time with us, and Merry Christmas too. Merry Christmas. Bye bye. Bye bye. As we end today's program, I want to thank you all for being with us. If you have any questions or comments about the show, you can send them to me through our website. That is www.CloseEncounterTV.com. Again, www.CloseEncounterTV.com. Or if you want to listen to past personally speaking episodes, go to the same website. Just click on the radio button at the top of the page. Please be sure to visit that site and encourage others to do the same. And you can also listen to past personally speaking episodes by going to www.ollmp.org Again, www.ollmp.org And you'll not only get the show, but you'll get weekly homilies by Monsignor Jim Lasanti. I'm privileged to serve as host and executive producer, personally speaking. Our producer is Lisa Jandovitz. Our engineer is Chris Wallach. And our audio facility is Dream Recording Studios on Long Island. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be with you again next time on Personally Speaking.